Same exact thing as last time. Lifting and pushing on my tong. Now I'm gonna set my toe over the horn, rock it back till there's daylight. All right, my center punch is way, my toe bend's way off. I need to push the lateral side in and tighten the medial side. This move works great for it, the Turnka toe bend. Now I can tighten my medial toe. By flattening out the inside edge, it's giving me much more width. So I'll gather that width over the horn, which will thicken the outside edge. All right, this is gonna be the lateral Scottish cock. I'm just gonna upset it a little bit, backing up blows just to widen that section. I'm gonna go to my radius edge, hang over about an inch and a quarter, slightly picking up on the shoe. I'm gonna use the heel of the round side of my hammer to dig in and make my heel check. Trying to come as close to the edge of the stock as possible, but not up onto the face of the anvil. Lean it, chamfer off my edges. Then I'm gonna create my quarter bend. Or start my quarter bend, I should say. I'm being patient, just dropping my hammer, wait until I feel the steel bend. Last couple hits on the outside edge of the heel cock. Pulling it into the horn. Finishing off my branch. All right. Now I have my offset. I've moved my material, my heel cock slightly outside of the center of stock to give some lateral, lateral stability to the horse. The dent from the hammer will become my heel check once I turn the caulk up. I've tried not to thin my branch too much over the horn. We need some, we need some uh, bearing surface for that horse to stand on, so we need width. I'm going to bend this caulk up over the rounded edge hanging over a good hammer face width. I don't want it to come to a 90. I want it to be slightly less than a 90 degree angle. Notice I'm hitting not flat and parallel to the anvil, hitting with my hammer handle up slightly, driving the back of the caulk into the anvil to create a corner. The stock's getting wide, so I'm going to bring it back to an inch and a quarter. All I'm trying to do is create a square block. I'm not worried about canting the heel cock or anything like that at this point, just making a block.
maintain my section in front of the caulk. And keep the front side nice and clean. Not letting it get any puckers or dents. Now that I've got my corner built, notice I'm hitting more flat, more parallel to the anvil. I'm not doing this, pulling it back, because I've got a corner. All right, so there's step one of the heel cock. Just a nice block with plenty of material and a beginning of a nice square corner. I eventually want this to be a 90 degree corner back here from the bearing surface to the back edge of the heel cock should eventually be a 90. Pin me. Get over there. Pin it right there. Now with a couple of swift blows at the end of the cock, I'm gonna turn it up. I'm not gonna set it down, I'm just gonna turn it up and leave it laying back for now. Have you noticed the top of the cock is belled out? Here you see that? To fix that, I'm gonna go over the horn, set the heel check on the horn. Basically, the heel check is just past the center on my side, and the heel cock is just past center on the off side. Now I'm just gonna hit parallel to the anvil at the top of the cock. See how that straightened it up? And it's not bailed out anymore. You could also use a little bit of that. All right, Lloyd, let's pull it this a little bit. Go ahead. It ain't made of glass. This is an inspected fuller. It ain't gonna blow apart, I've already inspected it. Unless you hit it crazy like that. That's good. All right, got a nice deep mark right where I want. Notice I didn't hem that. I'm gonna have to do a little hemming just to keep my section, but on this wide stock, you don't get near as much blowout as you do on narrower stock. But with hemming, I'm gonna lean the shoe toward the ground surface on the horn. I'm gonna cock my hammer toward the ground surface. I'm gonna work up the, the ground surface edge of the shoe to allow for the display or compensate for the displacement of metal that the fuller is going to cause. Maybe be very careful not to go past the start of my fullering with my hemi. If you go past it, you'll end up with a little dent in between your fullering and your toe that you can never get rid of. All right, this heel cock, or this shoe is a hammer finished shoe, so I've got to do a good job because I can't come back in and fix it with the raft. Now that I've got my block, I'm going to put my heel check on. I'm going to start hitting at the back side of the cock at about a 45 degree angle, and I'm going to work that right up to the leading edge, then stop. Being careful not to lose my width at the leading edge. So now I've got my heel check. I'm gonna hang that over the off edge. I'm gonna rotate the shoe away from that heel check. And then I'm gonna hit parallel at the bottom of the cock, or the top of the cock. This will cant the cock to where it comes in line with travel after we bend the branch. I'm gonna go right back to my heel check, hitting at a 45 degree angle, and then set down the top a couple of hits. I'm going to clean up my leading edge, work on my check, hang it over the edge, twist it away, hit parallel. 
Leave it right there, half face blow. Right to my heel cock or my heel check. Set down the top. Work my leading edge. Go to my heel check. Hang it over the edge, twist it away from the heel check, hit parallel. Back to my heel check. And then hit the top. As you can see, it's starting to be, leading edge is beginning to be at a different angle. It's not perpendicular to the center line, it's canon. When I make the quarter bend, the idea is to have the leading edge perpendicular to the line of travel. All right, I'm gonna rehem that branch a little bit, being careful not to go past my fullering. Then I'm gonna take the back edge off. Where's my striker at? All right, I'm not going to worry about pritchling that yet because after I turn up this other branch, I'm going to have to come back and reshape, reforge, get all my get my heel cocks lined up. So I don't want to pritchle this shoe a bunch of times. I only want to pritchle it once. I've only fullered about two thirds of the depth that I want to be at. Finally, my I'm two thirds shy of my final depth. That way, I can come back through on my cleanup heat, clean up my fullering. The fullering will knock all the scale out and then lightly repunch each hole and then pritch a one time and I'll have good nail so fit. Only have a third of the depth left to go. Yeah, one one good smooth pass should do it. I'm going to flatten this out. All that hemming and fullering is thickening this branch up, so I need to flatten it. Sections don't only just go this way, they also go thickness wise. Most draft shoes you see will have a very thin toe maybe under a half inch, about seven sixteenths of an inch thick, and the branches will be almost five, five eighths of an inch thick. That makes no sense. The toe needs to be the thicker part for wear. If you can reset a shoe, that's good. You're going green. You're helping out the environment and the economy. If you make a shoe that has a weak toe right off the bat, you're not gonna get to reset it. Now you're hurting the economy and the environment. Come on, Striker man, let's mean you iron it out. Hit flat. Thank you. 